All right, folks, now I know I'm going to get in trouble on this Friday afternoon for stirring it up and talking about a 589 XRP theory, but I want to revisit this because I'm seeing folks in the community talking about this once again. This is something that I was a part of back in the day early on in the XRP community was listening to all these quote unquote insiders, these theories, these riddles, and we were doing decodes every day. Every time David Schwartz put out a tweet, we're trying to figure out what it meant. And we've been presented new information. We've been consolidated for seven years, waiting for this thing to break out. So I wanted to revisit these early, you know, this particular theory and talk about what we've learned since it came out, what has changed, what is the same, and if it's still in play or not. Now, I want you guys to understand that this is not a price prediction from me. I'm not saying that XRP is going to go to 589, but I'm also not willing to say that it can't go to 589 and it can't go to 10,000 bucks. And I know that some market cap bros are already getting ready to type on that market cap calculator. But the thing is that you have to understand is that market cap is just one metric that we use to value a stock or a commodity. And for example, we just saw 4 trillion market cap uh, growth for the overall stock market in the past nine trading days. Now, what you have to understand though, is that 4 trillion did not come into this market. You have a market cap multiplier. And so what it means is that the last traded price by the supply per, you know, you times that together to get your market cap calculation. It's very simple, but where folks get confused is they think that for XRP to go to 589, they do the math on what that market cap would be. And they assume that all of that has to come into the asset for it to depreciate in price that much, but that's not how these markets work. And the case in point that I'm sharing with you right now is the fact that the overall uh, stock market grew by over 4 trillion in the past nine days. We did not get 4 trillion of inflows, right? We got much less, but because the market cap, the way, the, the, the way that it's calculated, the way that it's done, it shows a growth of 4 trillion, but 4 trillion new dollars did not come into the market. More on that later, I want to explain, and really the part of the theory that interests me most is the part about them keeping XRP as low as possible for as long as possible before rocketing the price up and pricing folks out. This is what the community is talking about. I want to address it. And while we wait for an SEC appeal, while we wait for anything else in the news cycle to come on out, it's been kind of quiet. It's been kind of boring and our price action hasn't been doing much. So I figured let's revisit this theory that the community has been talking about lately. A few data points before we get there. Let's get into it. So I don't know what we can put on this as far as validity, but this is somebody sharing a story here. Having a beer with a buddy tonight. His cousin is in finance, works at one of the big banks, says they've all been in full panic mode ever since the carry trade and are expecting something big to break any day. They're all saying it's time to short this pig be safe out there. Now, we just had one of the best weeks in the stock market in a very long time where all of the stocks were back up today, but I did want to highlight another one too that we've been watching very, very closely. And maybe you guys have picked up some of this asset at my website, zachrector.com. We've been trying to help you guys pick some up before it made this move. And here it goes. Massive green candle coming in for gold. Are you kidding me? And I said, look at this triple top. This is just like the triple top that we did uh, over $2,000 per ounce. We were at 2050, 2080, triple tapped it. And then we finally break through and we go into a new reality, consolidating here above 2300, triple top above 2450. And then we get that breakthrough today with a massive, massive green candle. Like I said, all of our community resources are at zachrector.com. But if you've been looking to pick up the precious metals, silver, while it was on sale, back up to 29 bucks. You got to get it while you can because it just is ready to move back up here following gold. And this is a new reality for gold and silver. We're going to talk more about that later with 159 countries ready to join BRICS. Yep. They're stacking gold and they're getting ready to do their deals. XRP might help them facilitate that. Now, we did see an interview here with Joe Rogan and Peter Thiel coming out today. Quote, Social Security is an intergenerational Ponzi scheme that was designed to be a welfare system. This is from Peter Thiel, and I think that he's spot on. I, I agree. We've been talking about Social Security here recently because on the <clears throat> August 14th day that the Social Security Administration was founded, we were celebrating the birthday just a couple days ago of the Social Security. Well, 
Maybe some people were celebrating it. I wasn't celebrating it, but we were talking about it because they just had the largest hack ever where literally every American social security number and address was doxxed in this hack that just occurred. And it's already been buried by the mainstream news. Nobody's talking about it. And I, I find it very interesting that this all comes out on the day uh, that we celebrate the birthday of the Social Security Administration, and then it's buried. And just like so much in this news cycle these days, we get these huge things, the carry trade, the unwind, and it sent panic and shockwaves and ripples all throughout our markets. And then just a couple of days later, the market recovers, some green candles come in, and everybody acts like everything's fine. No, no, no. no. It's not fine. And the Social Security program that's already set to go bankrupt and bust here in 2032, I think they're set to run out of money. And speaking of programs that are running out of money, uh, let's take a look at the Kamala economic policies that just got released here today. Here's your summary from Big Blue Wave USA on X. Yeah, we'll see about that big blue wave, won't we? Kamala Harris's economic policy plan. Here's her bullet points. Eliminate medical debt for millions of Americans. Banning grocery food price gouging. Now, I'm going to stop right there because I talked about this in yesterday's video and I offended some people, I think, by saying that I didn't think that the government needed to come in and protect us by banning price gouging, whatever that means and however that would be done. No one explains how that would actually be done in real life through policies directed by the government. Nobody actually explains that, but it sounds good to say that we're going to stop the big, bad, evil corporations. The problem is, is that I come from a background of, I don't need the government to protect me. And if a government, a corporation is price gouging, I won't shop there. And we have this thing called the internet that gets to spread the word about corporations that are doing bad things or immoral things or price gouging. And then we all get to learn about it. And then we all get to make a decision. We all get to vote with our dollars every single day, whether or not we want to shop with said corporation that is quote unquote price gouging. This is why I look to the free market versus the government to protect me. We, we, we have open free markets. We have an internet that spreads the word faster than ever before. I don't need the government to protect me from the price gouging. And you want a case in point example of, of, of how this works in reality? Look at Starbucks. Look at the failure of Starbucks. Two quarters in a row of negative growth. Sales are down. Same store sales are down. 6% year over year. They've had two quarters of negative growth. And, 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 and so this is a company, a corporation, that definitely does gouge you. I joke about it all the time, paying 7 bucks for a woke Starbucks latte. What have we been doing? We're no longer going there. I'm making coffee at home. See, I get a vote with my dollars every single day. Nobody's forcing me to buy from the Starbucks corporation. And what we need is we need more competition. That's what's going to bring down prices, not more government regulation, which stifles and, and, and inhibits the amount of companies that can participate in our, our markets and effectively bring down price through competition, not through government control. It's two different ways to look at it. And I think that it's been proven time and time again, and I'm going to show you guys CNN and ABC, what they had to say about this policy. But continuing on, I digress. She wants to cap prescription drug costs. Okay. And then we already talked about this one, the $25,000 subsidy for first time home buyers. So Biden's plan, which was 10,000, wasn't enough. Kamala is going to step it up to 25,000 for first time home buyers. Where the, where's the money going to come from? Well, don't worry about that one. The 6,000 child tax credit ups the ante from J.D. Vance, the vice president select of President Trump, right? He wanted to take it to 5,000. And I said, the Kamala campaign's playing catch up. How do they catch up? Well, this is how it's done. So I'm going to give props to Kamala. You know, this, this plan, it's got, you know, some interesting points to it, but she did take it one step further than J.D. Vance. She's taken that child tax credit to $6,000. That's incredible. Now, if she would just copy uh, Trump on firing Gary Gensler and a few other things for crypto, and you know, now we'd be getting interesting. But folks, don't take it from me. I know what you guys are just going to say. Oh, enough of the politics. Stick to, stick to crypto, bro. No, this impacts our wallets. This impacts our businesses. This impacts our investments. This impacts every aspect of our life. We got to understand it. This is CNN absolutely eviscerating Kamala Harris's economic plan. Don't take it from me. This is the commie news network. 
quote, We've seen this tried in lots of other countries before, Venezuela, Argentina, the Soviet Union. It leads to shortages, black markets, and it might actually increase prices. Don't take it from me. I shouldn't have made any comments. I should have just kept my mouth shut and let CNN do the talking. Oh, we're not done yet either. Take it. Take a look. This is ABC News. Just blasted Kamala Harris's economic agenda. Quote, the plan is light on details, as always. Uh, politicians on both sides love to do that. Light on details on how she would pay for these programs and how it would actually work in execution. But the politicians doing the dance that they always do, right? The details don't matter. The devil's always in the details. And the devil, uh, by the way, is coming to get paid from you. The, 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 you know, the portion of Americans that actually do pay taxes and do pay your quote unquote fair share, that's who's going to cover this burden. The folks that aren't paying the taxes, right, which is ends up being the wealthy elite that, you know, pay, pay very little in taxes. And then it ends up being the lower class, which does, doesn't pay much in taxes. They're the ones that reap the benefits. Well, it's that middle class, the heartland of America, the heartbeat of America that gets gutted. That's the problem. Now, in response, we're seeing countries around the world drop our dollar, drop our treasury at the fastest pace since the great financial crisis. And the final chess move that they need to complete is executing a deal for cross-border trade, cross-border payments, and a payment network that everybody can you know, participate in that removes the trust. Now, I know what you're thinking. XRP would be the best solution. We already know that deal. And I've already made the playlist, BRICS loves XRP, because we've highlighted how many of these BRICS nations are already using on-demand liquidity with XRP. Ripple has partnerships with institutions in many of these countries. Although BRICS hasn't come out and said we're unilaterally accepting XRP and XRP is the one, and none of these countries have either, these countries have allowed institutions within their country to partner up with Ripple, flip the switch with XRP on-demand liquidity, and it's already live. So this article came out here today from Watcher Guru. 159 countries set to adopt BRICS new payment system. Here you go, folks. Taking a look at this thing. And they talk about how Russia's been using their system. And this system is called... Uh, where is it? Right here. The SPFS platform system for transmitting financial messages. Okay. It's an alternative to SWIFT. But the problem is that these countries don't trust each other. We are holding discussions on the interaction of such platforms, but here the interest and technical readiness of our partners are important. Now, this is the uh, Russian central bank governor who is giving this statement. So the Russian central bank governor saying that 159 countries are ready to adopt the BRICS payment system when it goes live and that they've already been exploring Russia's system. They've been exploring alternatives and they're looking for others, but this comes on the upcoming BRICS 2024 summit that's going to be taking place in October. We'll be watching that one closely. Continuing on, let's talk Ripple XRP. This is Ripple SVP of Stablecoins, Jack McDonald, also the CEO of PolySign or whatever is left of that entity. And that's exactly why I'm bringing up this. We have Jack appearing on you know Crypto in One Minute, which is a segment that Ripple has been putting out here. And that's great to see. It's all good. It's all great, right? The problem is, is that we have Jack McDonald here before. And, and see, I, I'm bringing this up to show you guys that I don't have just the XRP bullish blinders on. Even though we're about to talk about 589 XRP next, I wanted to share this with you guys to show you that I'm willing to criticize Ripple. I'm willing to take a look at XRP and, and see where it's weak, where we are lacking in key areas, in different utilities. And I'm willing to criticize my own theory in XRP and Ripple, right? I think that it's ridiculous that we have Jack McDonald out here making a crypto in one minute video for Ripple when we still don't have any word really from PolySign. We don't have any word from Link2, from Poly and I'm not blaming Link2 for that. Link2 is not getting in for any information from Ripple or Jack McDonald. And we need an answer. So I'm waiting to follow up on the PolySign update. I dropped that one a month or so ago. And I'm waiting to follow up. But in the meantime, Ripple and Jack McDonald are just going about like everything's OK. Business as usual. It's like, hello, you left a bunch of investors in, 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 holding a bag here and they don't know what's in the bag. If there's anything left, has PolySign been gutted? My sources, well, my source already has explained to me that they took employees from standard custody to Medico. and uh, Sorry, they took standard custody employees 
And when they acquired Standard Custody, they brought them on to Ripple, but they're using Medico tech. They're not using Standard Custody's tech. They're using Medico. And really, it looks like all they're using from Standard Custody is the licenses, mostly. And maybe some existing clientele. But what the heck is going on with PolySign? We need answers. Let me know in the comments down below what you think about this whole fiasco with PolySign. If you guys have invested in PolySign, let me know how you're feeling about this. Because I'm, I'm not invested in PolySign, but I think this is absolutely ridiculous. On, the, on behalf of Ripple and Jack McDonald. Just is what it is. Now, now that we got the criticisms out of the way. Let's get crazy. Let's talk about this. So this is the Shane Ellis theory. It's where the 589 XRP comes from, from folks thinking that XRP is going to go to $589, $500 XRP, $10,000 XRP. And I want to, this came up in my feed and then I saw a bunch of people in the community talking about it. And so I wanted to revisit it. So I came across this tweet a couple days ago. And I want to know what you guys think about this part of the theory first. Let me know in the comments down below. Shane Ellis says that they want to keep the price as low as possible for as long as possible, with institutions buying as much as possible before rocketing the price to keep as many people out. They did it with the dot-com. They will do it again. So basically saying they did it with the dot-com bubble and some of the best companies that emerged from the dot-com bubble, right? And then out of that uh, uh, emerge these trillion dollar companies that we now see today. Now, Mr. BXRP asks, hey, Shane, are you the guy who did the paper? I have it saved, but haven't read it yet. Can you share your background? Thank you. Shane Ellis responds and says, I work for the UK government. So, you know, you got to go. This is back. These tweets, when were these put out? 2018. What a time to be in the XRP community, man. So this is when I got into XRP. I got into the cryptocurrency space. And then by the end of 2018, 2019, I was going all in on XRP because this is the type of stuff that we were just looking and breaking down and going through every single day, right? And when we have folks that are claiming to be insiders from the UK government talking about these theories of them keeping the price suppressed, letting institutions come in, and then they were going to rocket the price up, it all made sense. We're looking around and saying, okay, yeah. And this is why I, we've been sitting on the edge of our seat for six years waiting for XRP to break out is because of this, you know, this type of stuff that we've been decoding and uh, researching. Now, I wanted to show you guys what this theory really included. Here's a summary of Shane Ellis's theory on why XRP could potentially reach $500. And I wanted to go through this and explain what has, you know, played out, what has changed, what has stayed the same. So let's get started here with the first point. Ripple has partnered with liquidity providers to create a network of exchanges that will facilitate transactions for institutions. Facts. We know that that is taking place. We know that that is happening. Now, this was put out in February of 2024. Okay. So we know that that is taking place. They've added Uphold is one of the most recent partnerships that they've announced. Uh, the CEO of Uphold, Simon McLaughlin, on my show said that they're going to be flipping the switch on the United States here soon, right? So we know that Ripple has partnered with liquidity providers to create a network of exchanges to facilitate the transactions for institutions. Next, the price of XRP will be tightly controlled to eliminate arbitrage opportunities and ensure smooth transactions. Well, I don't know about you guys, but you know, six, seven years here of consolidation, it sure feels like they've kept XRP tightly controlled and suppressed. Although you've seen violent swings in the XRP price, just like we got when we got the final ruling from Judge Torres here just a couple weeks ago, um, on the fine for Ripple and XRP shot up 20% in a day, decoupled from the rest of the space. And then it was immediately brought back down with the rest of the space. And now we're trading with the rest of the space once again. So it does seem that XRP has been tightly controlled. The exchanges will be incentivized to use XRP provided by market makers to increase the price of XRP as it makes it easier to service XRapid transactions. Now, remember, this is back when there was XRapid, XCurrent, XVIA. When he initially put this out in 2018, 2019, it was XRapid, XCurrent, XVIA, XThis, XThat. Then it all got merged into ODL. And then now it's all merged into Ripple Payments. And Brad Gollinghouse has told us that about 50% of Ripple Payments is going through settlement with XRP. Now, exchanges will be incentivized to use XRP provided by market makers to increase the price of XRP. We have not seen that yet, have we? We have not seen them 
uh, increased the price of XRP yet, have we? Now, what's interesting too is the incentivization. Ripple can no longer do the investment contracts that you know the judge found to be investment contracts unless they register with the SEC and or uh, you, you know apply for exemptions that would allow them to continue providing those incentives. But for now, there is no uh, way for them to provide those incentives without creating an investment contract. So that those deals that have already been done, those are done. And for Ripple to be able to do those incentives going forward, they would be creating investment contracts they'd have to register or apply for an exemption. By using market maker XRP to increase the price, the exchange can create large buy sell walls to maintain price stability. Well, I would argue that that has been achieved. The market makers have kept XRP within a tight, tight range. But where this gets interesting is the theory suggests that a relatively small amount of money, 39 million XRP on Bittrex, could push the price of XRP to $500 on a single exchange. Now, obviously, this has not happened, but as I was explaining at the beginning of this video, when you look at market cap, right, uh, you know, folks will do the math. Oh, for XRP to go to 589, the market cap would have to be however many trillions of dollars, right? And that's just crazy. That's absurd. That would never happen. The problem, the problem with that logic is that you need to apply a market cap multiplier, just like we saw with the stock market, which, you know, grew by $4 trillion worth of market cap. Four trillion of new money did not come in. Way less than that did. But because the market cap is calculated by the most recent price, the last traded price times supply equals market cap, you don't need four trillion to come into the market for the overall market cap of the stocks to grow by four trillion. I hope that that makes sense to everybody. And this is where market cap as a data point has been incorrectly used to put a limit on the price of XRP. The price, is, uh, the price increase is expected to happen simultaneously on Ripple's preferred partner exchanges worldwide. Okay, so here's where the theory comes from. This is what got all of us so excited back in the day. Once again, this theory started circulating in 2018. What has changed since? Well, our, our expectations that this was going to happen sooner has changed, right? We're still here. XRP is at what, 56 cents today? I haven't even checked the price of XRP today. But... What we can say for a fact is happening is this network of providers and partners in liquidity being created and the tight uh, range at which XRP is trading in will actually only get tighter as Ripple introduces the stable coin and then they introduce their stable coin with XRP to the AMM. That's going to you know, make that the tightest arbitrage, the tightest margin between what XRP will trade in because we're going to get deeper uh, deeper liquidity now as far as being able to provide these liquidity uh, numbers that range from you know swift doing six trillion daily aci worldwide doing 14 trillion daily the clearinghouse of america you know in the us doing two trillion daily these are markets that move trillions of dollars on a daily basis to be able to do so this is where they say xrp needs to be at a higher price you need XRP to be at a higher price, or you need a large supply of XRP that you can turn over again and again and again. Ultimately, I want us to look at this theory and understand the $500 number gets a lot of people caught up. Everything else in this theory is in play, is already underway. And the last things that we're waiting on is to wait for, you know, kind of this flip of the switch moment. As far as how high will XRP go? I don't think that we need to get hung up on the 589 number. We need to take a look and see, you know, is this an asset that could easily go into the upper double digits? Because I think that everybody's come to a consensus that just based off of basic TA, basic assumptions, we could see this asset go to a 10 to $15 price range, this bull run. That's nothing incredible. That's nothing exciting. And a lot of people are here for $100 XRP or more. And so the question that we have to ask ourselves, is that still possible? I think it is. And I think the joy in this XRP journey is getting to see whether or not we actually achieve that. So don't focus so much on the $500 price prediction. Focus on the fundamental utilities that are being built on the XRP ledger, what that's going to do for uh, this ledger and the limited supply of XRP that will be used to be able to you know, actually utilize this ledger, right? There's only so much XRP to go around. And as you get this XRP locked up in these various pools, whether it's the AMM, whether it's Ripple payments, whether it's, you know, 
folks like myself just storing my little bag of XRP buried in my backyard and it ain't coming out for nothing, right? That's all locking up XRP supply, which is another miscalculation that many folks make is they're still trying to do the market cap calculation for XRP at 100 billion XRP. Well, there's not 100 billion XRP. We've already had over 10 million XRP burned and it's gone forever. And then you have 40, uh, just shy of 40 billion XRP that's in Ripple's escrow that they don't have access to. So right away, don't be using 100 billion for your math and don't be using even the, even the 50 billion circulating supply or whatever they say it is. There's not 50 billion circulating XRP. There's 50 billion that's out in the, you know, the hands of Ripple and uh, you know, other folks. Is it circulating? No, my XRP is not circulating. My XRP is held as a reserve on my balance sheet. And, you know, probably about 70, 80% of that XRP is always going to be held on my balance sheet. It's not going anywhere. So this is why I think that many people are making incorrect assumptions. They're improperly using market cap and they have a limited belief system and they have recency bias where they can only look at the past performance of XRP and they think that it's doomed forever. For me, I still see the partnerships, I still see the liquidity network growing. The AMM is only putting more fuel on that fire. And I'm not willing to rule out these high price predictions. I'm not willing to come out and confirm these price predictions. I'm not gonna put out price predictions myself saying that it's going to happen. But what I am going to say is that I'm here for the ride. I'm here for the journey. And what we do see growing, the adoption, the utility, it's attractive to me as an investor. I'm very happy with my bag. And I'm interested to hear what you guys have to say about this theory, mostly not so much the 500 XRP part, but the part about keeping it low as possible for as long as possible, allowing institutions to buy up before they send this thing rocketing to the moon. And the moon could be 50 bucks, it could be 589, it could be 10,000. I'm not here to talk about that. I'm interested to hear what you guys think, keeping it as low as possible for as long as possible before they send it rocketing up. You guys let me know in the comments down below. I got a full update that's gonna be dropping tomorrow for you guys before I head on in to my Discord weekly call, which we have every single Saturday at 11.30 a.m. Eastern. So make sure you guys make it into the Patreon, sign up there to get access to Discord before 11.30 a.m. Eastern if you wanna get access. But I do record our weekly calls and then I post them after the fact for our Patreon community. So if you wanna get access, it's all over there. All of our community resources are at zachrector.com and I greatly appreciate your support and I'm looking forward to reading the comments down below. You guys have a great weekend. God bless you all. I am your host, Zach Rector. I really appreciate all of the love and support. If you want to support the channel, just remember that you can start by smashing that thumbs up for me, sharing this content far and wide and everything else is at my website.